will make a way. Amen. Shared this morning from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and verses 9 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Amen. Amen. There's a verse 16, a hitchhiker, I would just add to this, a couple verses after. And of his fullness have all we receive, and grace for grace. Verse 17, for the law was given by Moses, the law comes through Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. God, may you be with us in a special way this morning. Online, down the road as people watch this. God, we pray for your witness with us. In your name we pray. Amen. I pray that the Lord, again, would be with us in a special way. Because of me, in spite of me, again, it's a very important message this morning. Our theme is this, Jesus' light brings grace and truth into our lives. Our series on the Incarnation, ultimately climax on Christmas Eve, also the Sunday after, some good words, rediscovering the significance of Christmas. Our first week, Jesus is our King. I don't know. I may not know who you voted for, but if you're a Christian, I do know who your King is. It's very important right now. Your King is Jesus Christ. You can vote for a candidate, but your King is Jesus Christ. Second week, Jesus is our Savior, is our Messiah. Third week, Jesus is God with us. Talked about Jesus being with us in the moments of life. And today our focus on Jesus brings light into our lives. Jesus brings light into our lives. The, the, the gospel I, I, I shared with you this morning just so rich. I'm reading, a, I'm reading from something from our daily bread. It talks about the backstory of Jesus. And Jesus was in on it from the very beginning. And 
does show up in what we call the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, long before he came as the Christ child. Nebuchadnezzar said, I think I see a fourth person in that furnace. That was Jesus. Jacob wrestled with an angel all night long. I've seen God face to face and lived. I believe that was Jesus Christ. Let's get to that. Point one. Darkness is most often associated with evil. Adversity, ignorance, despair, gloom, and even death. Light, on the other hand, is usually associated in Scripture with God. Goodness, joy, knowledge, hope, and life. If you're keeping an outline of today's message, Roman number, Roman number, number one is darkness. Tomorrow's going to be the longest night. December 21st, the winter solstice. And then the day after that, the days just start getting longer and longer. The perennial battle that defines us as human beings, perennial means repetitive. I didn't know what that meant until not that long ago. The perennial battle, the reoccurring battle that defines us as human beings is the battle between good and evil, light and darkness. It all, it's not only a battle outside of us, it's a battle that wages war inside of us. Depression has often been described as a journey through darkness. In our journeys of faith, we hear about the dark night of the soul. I left out a story last week of the moments when God is with us. Story about Billy Graham. Imagine that. One night, one time in his life, Billy Graham went to a dark night of the soul. And he wrote his mother about it. And his mother wrote him back. And Billy Graham was greatly encouraged. So Billy Graham had a dark night of the soul. You think you're going to be exempt? Somebody like him goes through it? Amen. The Bible says, Do not rejoice over me, O my enemy. When I fall, sometimes I battle with Satan's like hand-to-hand -hand combat. Do not rejoice over me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. Micah 7 and 8. Roman numeral number 2, the good news. Christmas is a light. The problem is darkness. The good news is light. Christmas is a light in the darkness. The light of Jesus. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in, walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is the word of God. God's self-disclosure, God's revelation of himself to humanity. There's a problem, darkness. There's good news, the light. Our response is to yield ourselves, to open ourselves to the light of Jesus Christ. When we say yes to Jesus, when we yield our lives to him, we move from darkness in the light. We are God's plan. We're a big part of God's plan for changing, for changing the world to receive the light and to share the light of Jesus. Grace and truth comes through Jesus Christ. I want to give you a heads up. Satan has truth. How do I know that? Because God's word says that. God's word says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Help us, Jesus. Yeah, there's hard truth about each of us. Terrible truth. Grace and truth comes through Jesus Christ. So let's talk about grace, God's comfort in compassion. Isaiah 40, verse 1, comfort, comfort my people. Where right now do you need the grace of Jesus Christ in your life? 
Comfort, comfort my people. You know, I never saw a footnote in my Bible saying, except for so and so. It includes you, it includes me. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Yesterday we had the home going service for Grace Slaughterback. She was born in the elder years of her parents' life. She was a PK. She was a preacher's kid. You know, one of the coolest things about Grace was when stroke took away language, she could still sing hymns. You went there and you sat at her bedside. It was there with Gwen before she died. But almost right up to the end, almost, Grace, if you started singing a chorus or a hymn with a chorus, she just knew them and she could sing, even when a stroke had taken away most of her language. Grace was a church lady in the highest sense of the word. And I offer this for Grace. This is Grace. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flow be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure, not the labors of my hand can fulfill thy law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin. Not a tone. Thou must save, and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for grace. Mercy and truth forsake you. We need mercy to survive. 
we need truth to grow. If I smile at you and say, how do I look? And I've got a big piece of spinach on my tooth. You've got to tell me. Amen. Truth. God's leading. God's correction. Where do you need Jesus' truth in your life? Pilot stays on course through constant correction. Early in my ministry, I was corrected. I was doing ministry at Trent State Prison. The chaplain there saw where I was going long before I did. He put me in a group of Princeton students. Field that group. You know, they later the chaplain told me, said to me, who is this guy? And, but they loved me and accepted me. One time I said in the group, I said, I saw a picture of Jesus. He was Chinese. I said, there's no way that was Jesus. He was not Chinese. A couple months later, we had to evaluate each other. One of my colleagues in that group said to me, John, I pray for you that you open yourself to truth. And he was particularly talking about my comment about the Chinese picture of Jesus. Because you do know that Jesus died on the cross for every nationality, every race, every color on the face of this earth. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is every one of them. John, I pray you open yourself to truth. I praise God for that correction. Stay with me. Another story I recently heard, never heard this before. Story about Rose Kennedy. She met with a pastor named Jess Moody, Moody Bible Institute. Now this was back some years ago. My next door neighbor who was Catholic said that when she was a little girl, she didn't want to go by a Protestant church. They, she was afraid they would, they would kidnap her, tie her up, and take her in the church and do bad things to her. So when Jess when Rose Kennedy met Jess Moody, this was when an evangelical Christian and a Catholic were in different places. Je Jess Moody tells this story, and I just don't want to miss any of it. She came to a Moody Bible study that Jess Moody was conducting. In that study, Moody challenged his hearers to make their hearts ready to meet the Lord because life is short. And no one knows what the future may hold. After the Bible study, Rose Kennedy said, I need to speak to you, Reverend Moody, privately. And said she had done what Moody was talking about. She confessed that as a young bride, she had been enamored. By the way, Rose Kennedy, this is the mother of JFK, Robert Kennedy. She confessed that as a young bride, she had been enamored with money. She became selfish, she told Moody, living only for her own desires. Then she gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. Soon it became apparent that something was very wrong with her daughter. Medical tests revealed that her daughter had been born with severe intellectual disabilities. And she was looking at being institutionalized and just facing a very challenging future. Rose Kennedy said that she and her husband were devastated. Then the devastation turned to enormous anger toward God. How could you have done this to us? She asked the Lord. The anger eventually turned to a corrosive bitterness that drained, drained every joy from her life. She didn't want to go out anymore, didn't want to go to social engagements, fearful that her anger about her daughter's condition would spill out. And that's when it happened. A maid who worked for the family spoke to her. Mrs. Kennedy said to me, I've been watching you for the last few weeks, and I've seen how angry you are. Mrs. Kennedy, if you don't do something, it's going to ruin you. Then the maid made a suggestion. It was right before Christmas. I think you should pray this prayer. Oh, Lord, make me a manger where the Christ child can be born. 
Rose Kennedy told Jess Moody that she was so angry that she fired the maid on the spot. But that night, when she went to bed, she couldn't sleep. Tossing and turning, she couldn't get that simple prayer out of her mind. Finally, she knelt by her bed and in an act of deep surrender, she prayed, Oh Lord, make my heart a manger where the Christ child can be born. In that moment, in the depth of the night, when she cried out in anguish, God heard and answered her prayer. She testified, I've always been religious, you know. I'm a Catholic. And I've always believed in Jesus. But this was different. On this night, she opened her heart to Christ in a new way. And her heart indeed became a manger where Christ could be born in her. Love replaced the anger that gripped her soul. And the end of the story is this. She rehired the maid. <laughs> Thank God. Who stayed with the family until she died many years later. Isn't this a really cool prayer? Oh Lord, make my heart a manger where the Christ child can be born. Or maybe it's like the sign on our what we put on our church sign. I've left it up a little, a little while longer than I normally do. The sign on Route 130 on our church sign. This is Christmas. The humble heart that receives Jesus anew. You know my story from the colleague about, oh Lord, where are you in this mess? And the most important place right now is for Jesus to be in our hearts. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. I also had another illustration, but you could look it up. December 18th, the Upper Room Devotion, where a young child, family was doing Christian work, and, and she just had doubt in her heart, and, but the Lord came to her in a special way with His light. Whatever the mess, the most important thing is to have Jesus in our hearts, his light to guide us. Please pray with me. And I say this prayer from our, our study, and we're going to be studying more this Wednesday night, but I say this I for everyone here, including myself. Jesus, I trust in you. Be my light. Fill me with your light. Grant me your hope. Help me to walk in your light, to share your light, to give your light. Use me, I pray, to push back the darkness. In your holy name, amen. And Lord, may we have humble <laughs> hearts that receive you anew. Have mercy upon us, Lord, sinners saved by your grace. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 And on this fourth Sunday of Advent, may we sing with joy in our hearts a classic Christmas carol of faith as Ken and Nancy play, The First Noel.